Okay, so here we are inside the Boss Converter vessel. Uh, real privilege to be here. And um, we've come in here to meet uh, the guys who put the bricks in place. And I'm delighted that uh, Ben Pinkham has chosen to join us. Ben's the uh, supervisor of the Bricky team uh, today. Uh, ben, thanks for getting us inside here and having a look around. It's an it's a amazing place. I guess you're quite used to it now, but uh, you've been doing this for a number of years, you were telling us. So t tell us a bit about um, how you joined the monolithics you work for uh, and what you've been doing in your time in a company so far. Uh, well, I left school at 16. Um, I was granted an apprenticeship in monolithics. Um, I done my years in college, learning on site done in college. Uh, I worked in a torpedo area for five years, learning to brick the torpedoes. I work in the degasser area of the boss plant now, uh, relining the degassers and optic vessels. And then, once obviously, when these come around, then I come up here and supervise the boys bricking this as well. It's a really interesting story, and I guess I was under the misapprehension that you guys kind of came in, relined a boss vessel, and then went off somewhere around the world to reline another boss vessel. But you're on site permanently in Patalba working on refractories and I understand that in the steel plant and casters alone we're spending around 26 million pound on refractories so I guess you guys keep busy you must be pretty fit oh I don't know about that but uh, we are, we're awfully busy but explain to us now we're inside the vessel Ben a bit about what's going on because you know we talked earlier about the color coding of different bricks the shape of different bricks now you know we we, we look like we're quite high up in a vessel so we're quite a long way through the job talk to us about the different colors and the different areas of the vessel and what's required? Uh, well, right now we're in mid-barrel of the vessel. Uh, I think we, we are 54 courses up from the, from the knuckle. The knuckle is the turning point in the vessel from the bowl to barrel. We are about 50 courses up now. Um, we've been here since Thursday, so we've bricked out since, we've come all the way up here since Thursday. Um, the different colors, um, obviously we, um, we brick these vessels to a plan to a drawer in as such um, and each area is different to e each other. We have one area here which is the the tap hole area. These are a, a different quality together of areas because obviously when they turn the vessel over this is where the steel comes out and this is where it takes the most wear. We have the blues which are the trunning areas which is doesn't take a lot of impact that's why they're lower quality than these. And then on the back end, we have the purple bricks, which are better quality again, because they turn the vessel over the other way, and this is where they tip the scrap into the vessel, and that takes a good bit of damage there. So they're the best quality, best quality bricks. Um, the, the, these mats and tickets are for expansion. So when they light the vessel up, with the heat in the vessel, these bricks will expand. So all these mats and tickets will burn out, and leave enough room for these vessels to expand. That stops uh, any cracking or breakages of the bricks when, they, when the vessel is live then. The thing that overwhelms me is, the, is a, not only the number of bricks and the complexity of the puzzle that you have to make, but the weight of these things. I, I lifted one up earlier, and I'm not sure I could carry one from one side of the vessel to the other. So how many boys do you have in here at a time, and, and how much of a break do they get? Um, at the moment, uh, due to uh, COVID restrictions and other things, um, we currently have four boys in the vessel working at a time, two aside, plus one cleaner in here as well, around to take a mess out here, etc. Et um, years ago, we would have had 10 men in here, so you can imagine the difference. Yeah, it's an incredible piece of work, and I take my hat off to every single one of you because that is a proper day's work. And lastly, uh, Ben, Looking behind us, uh, this this doesn't look like the safety lining. Can you explain what we're looking at behind the bricks? Yeah, behind the uh, bricks, in, this is the this is the cone area here. Um, this is a, a 125 mil of shot creek, it's called, which is a, a sprayable concrete. Uh, there's mesh uh, welded onto the cone, and then uh, another company will come in then and they will spray 125 mil of sprayable concrete onto the cone and that stays in then as a safe learning. Years ago they would be bricked but they've moved away from that now and they spray the cones instead. So I think the other thing that surprised me coming in here was the level to which the the iron and, and steel comes up to because part of me was expecting it would come up to about here but I understand it's quite a lot lower. 
No, it, um, it's only enough iron that comes in to fill a ladle, which I know it, it seems like a lot, but compared to the size of this vessel, it doesn't really come up very far. Um, maybe, um, I don't know, a metre, a metre and a half from the bottom, something like that. Listen, you have to take your hats off to these guys. I don't think I've ever seen an environment in which I, I can't comprehend how hard these guys are working, the weights they have to lift, the complexity of the puzzle they are trying to solve, and in such a short period of time, whilst remaining, you know, not only safe, but COVID safe. And as I understand it, this thing's going to be finished bricking uh, tomorrow night. So uh, they go at some rate of knots as well. Ben, listen, I'm full of admiration for you and your team. Thanks for everything you're doing here. Uh, good luck in this job and the next one you come on to. But for now, thanks very much for your time. Uh, no worries at all. Thank you very much.